Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, final public town council meeting for the year 2021. Thank you all for coming. If you would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day that you have blessed us with. God, we give you thanks and we ask your blessing on the people who have been called to lead our community. This place we call home, this place we live, we work, we play. God, grant them and us the wisdom and the courage to know and do what is right and good and true. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> so first on the agenda and the special presentation or request, we're going to uh, do an audit presentation by Corbett Stone with Robinson Farmer Cox Associates. Yes, sir. And welcome back. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, how was Rich Lane's first job? Are they doing okay? Rich Lane's is doing fine. Literally just, just stepped away from the podium over there and walked right up to this podium. I've seen a bruise on here. They were, uh, <laughs> one time I had to give a, a tense presentation. I actually had to meet with the board twice. And I was, I was, an attorney was, was present and had some bad news for them. We went into the first meeting, and as we left, he said, well, why didn't you give him the bad news? I said, because I've got to meet with him again next week. <laughs> one thing to have throwing rocks at you when you're walking in. Right. You, you got a chance to get in the way, though. <laughs> but, but thanks for having me. You should all have an audit presentation in front of you. And, and I'll tell you that I was very pleased this year uh, here at the audit. The audit went very well. Um, we didn't have too many adjusting entries as we've had in the past. Of course, the, the town got a consultant to kind of help them close out the books, but we were very pleased. Uh, you did receive an unqualified opinion, which means we believe those financial statements are materially correct. Uh, and you did not have, uh, we actually got rid of a finding in the back of the report. Uh, we still have one back there. It's not that significant. And um, so, like I said, I was just very pleased with how it went. If you turn to page one of the handout, Kind of go over some of these numbers. Get ready to blow. I don't know if we even need it. I'm gonna cut it off. Is that the weird one that's going on? I think it's worth throwing. On page one of the handout, hopefully everybody has a copy of this. <clears throat> walk you through it. Uh, we've got the general fund balance up there at the top. You can see you ended 2021 with a general fund balance of 544. That's up from 290 in the prior year and up from 103 in the year before that. So I kind of like that trend. Um, not included in that fund balance uh, are your ARPA funds. I think you had about $2.1 million in memory serves that you received in ARPA funds. We don't recognize that as revenue until we have allowable expenses. So when you receive ARPA funds, you debit your bank account and you credit essentially a liability uh, due back to the federal government. We call it unearned revenue. Uh, if you don't spend those, those grant funds in accordance with the requirements, then you would have to return it. So until you have allowable expenses, it sits there as a liability. Uh, water and sewer funds, you can see we're up a little bit. Uh, that's the net position. And, and really, net position takes all the assets of the system minus all the liabilities of the system. It's the best guess of what we think you know, the system is worth at the end of the day. Uh, those are depreciated values for assets, so we do depreciate those over some period of time. Total cash and investments, $3.1 million. Again, 2.1 of that uh, represents ARPA funds. Uh, so that's all funds. You had $3.1 million. 2.1 is ARPA. Uh, actually, a little bit more than 2.1. Uh, so actual available cash, if you will, $957,000 at the end of 21. You can see that's an increase. It's the highest expense since 2017. Uh, that fund balance, while it's growing, of course, we'd like it to be a little bit higher. For a town this size, we'd like to see about 25% of your operating budget for the general fund. It'd be a good target. Uh, but I like 
I like the direction you're heading in. Total outstanding debt, $4 million. Uh, your pension liabilities, we break it down by water and sewer funds and the general fund. And then OPEB liabilities, and OPEBs are post deployment benefits. Uh, so if you allow retirees to sell your health insurance, you participate in the VRS Group Life Program, that sort of thing. Um, that's what those liabilities are. Population, 4,113, and that's probably one of the, the key numbers to focus in on there. And I think I mentioned that last year. Uh, these are estimates from the Wellman Cooper Center, but you can see population back in 2012, they estimated at 4,500, so we've had a decrease of about 400 people over that that 10 year period and, and you know when you when you have a decrease in population you, you didn't get rid of any roads you didn't really get rid of any water sewer lines you still got to maintain the same stuff and inflation went up the paying employees went yeah. up same. so it's a um, it, it, it's tough it's, it's tough to particularly grow fund balance when you have a long population uh, debt per capita, that's just your debt per capita, $978 does not include those OPEB or pension liabilities. If we included those, we'd be at $1,723. That compares to a state average, I think, about $2,700 from last year. So really debt and liability, long-term liabilities on per capita basis are very reasonable for the tax. The second page, I just kind of, I got some of that stuff graphed out at the bottom. Again, you see that big spike in cash investment balances, and that's because the market funds we received right in the year. The next page are just your original taxes, tax assessments, um, and you can see we had to jump up in 13, and then uh, in 21, uh, we're at 276 million dollars in total total real estate assessments. So not much growth since 2013. We are starting to see real estate. I don't know. Alcaster County Square, we're starting to see the prices of real estate go up. Uh, so in a couple of years from now, you may see a pretty good, pretty good jump in those assessed values. Same with personal property. I don't know if you've priced a used car lately, but they're getting very expensive. So we do expect those to move upwards. Uh, so that would mean should increase some, some tax revenue. On the flip side, as Todd mentioned, if your expenses are going up by the same percentage because of inflation, uh, you really haven't made any gains. The next page is our VRS, uh, really our VRS audit, if you will. The retirement system uh, found a person that retired but didn't really, wasn't eligible to retire. They'd only worked a couple of years and a locality never took them out of the retirement system that they made a contribution towards their retirement for years. So VRS now has us come in and we look at terminated employees to make sure they've been taken out of the VRS system uh, so you don't continue to make a contribution for them. We look at new hires to make sure they've been put into it. And then we randomly select people to make sure that the salary that's been reported, which will ultimately drive their retirement benefits, is correct in the VRS system. We didn't have any issues there. Uh, the only thing that we tested that we had an issue with, some of the loaded participants, and that's going to be uh, fire and rescue people, uh, police, uh, didn't have the right birth date, which makes it hard for VRS to calculate the liability, the, the future liability. Uh, but that was the correct birth date and the information reported to VRS for these individuals, but that was corrected for the current year. So we had to report on, on it in this letter to you, but uh, that is corrected for next year. On page five, we have our letter to those charged with governance. And you really get the boilerplate letter. Um, this letter does point out some of the, if we came into an audit and Todd didn't give us documents, and Leanne didn't provide us with documents that we requested. We reported to you this letter. We didn't run into any difficulties during the audit. If we asked for anything, they brought it to us uh, very quickly, I might add. So, didn't have any issues with the audit. You get the boilerplate letter. Uh, one thing to look at in this letter, though, is we do talk about significant estimates in the financial statements, and that we also tell you that certain disclosures in these financial statements are. Uh, you know, could, could fluctuate pretty wildly if inflation takes off on us, which kind of has the past couple months, um, or if, if some of the uh, underlying data that, that is used to calculate these estimates changes. <coughs> and then also attached, we show you our adjusting entries, the, re the audit, audit, the recommended audit adjustments for the year. Uh, 
uh, are attached to that letter. And then finally, <coughs> on page 12, we have all the new accounting standards that are coming out. Uh, so if you're having trouble dozing off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed to help. Uh, the one that will impact the town next year is a new standard on leases. Um, prior to really the current fiscal year, we only reported on capital leases. A capital lease is when you lease something and you're going to own it at the end of that lease. Uh, going forward, we're going to have disclosures about operating operating leases. Um, so you lease copiers if you're leasing property where we have to do disclosures about those operating leases going forward. We're going to send some templates out this winter so communities can start gathering that information. So hopefully it's just we extract it and put it in the financial report fairly easily. But I will, I will stop there and try to answer any questions that you might have. Also, I want to add to that outside of the 200 state fund balance, there's also a debt service value in there too. Five hundred, four hundred thousand. Debt service for the legitimate fund debt service. Uh, um, well, that's a week of water and sewer. Yeah, you're thinking water and sewer. Yeah, I'm thinking water and sewer. Two hundred thousand over and beyond fund out. Well, and net position takes that into account. So we talk about net position. We take all the assets minus all the liabilities. So we spend back out in those calculations of the net position for water and sewer. Any questions? Good. Thank you very much. Well, thank we appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. My contact information is on the front of the handout. We're here to serve you guys. So if you have any questions or you, you think I might be able to help you with anything, don't hesitate to, to call me or send me email. Appreciate that. We, we won't throw anything at you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me, you guys. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, uh, so there's no new business recognition. So uh, can I get a motion to approval of the council meeting minutes on November 9th, 2021? So moved. I get a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approval, stay so by saying aye. 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 All opposed, stay so by saying nay. All right, motion carries. Next, the approval of the financial statements and financial report for November 2021. Need a motion to approve. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, stay so by saying aye. 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 All opposed, stay so by saying nay. All right, motion carries. Next is committee and conference updates. Uh, Planning Commission Committee, Council Member Davis. Okay, so the Planning Commission has actually had two meetings. <laughs> we met uh, this Monday and the Monday before. The Monday before we had someone coming before us looking at expanding um, their storage building operation. Um, we needed some additional things on the, the plat and plan that they brought in, so they're going to be coming back in January. Um, we also talked about um, zoning updates. If you'll recall, we've been asked to, and we had a public meeting about the zoning where we would take away the, the cumulative zoning. So in the business district, if something happens to your building and it's a business use, you have to put it back into a business use. It can't go into residential the way it does now. Um, we had a bunch of people that came to the public meeting and voiced objection on that. Um, it came back to the Planning Commission and we did not move forward on it. Um, it's been pretty much brought back to us and we feel like possibly we need to have um, even maybe a joint meeting or joint work session to get more direction on, on how it needs to be. Um, so there was that and then let me see. Um, we also had a very, very small discussion on tiny houses. Um, it's probably going to, to come up at some point, and so we're trying.
trying to, to get ahead of the trend and pull some information in. So if we need to make those changes, we can. And then this past Monday, we met um, in regards to a, another storage facility that they are adding on um, an existing, onto their existing storage facility. And they do have a permit for it. And we reviewed everything and we recommend approval in going forward on this. So what are the two different ones? The one, the Bulldog storage? On Riverside. Okay, so. <coughs> And that was the one that we need more information on, and this, the other storage that we would be going forward on is on Fincastle, across from the Moose. Okay. Or, yeah, yeah I guess. across from the Moose property. Okay. He's adding on. One. It's just one building, isn't it? Yeah. Do we have any questions? Concerns? Anything else? Yep. All right. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> we'll uh, now go to the unfinished business portion of our meeting. So, uh, first is the, the first reading of amendments to exi existing ordinance of Chapter 23, Article 2, Division 11, Sections 23 through 64, 23-66. Attorney Pius, not here, so I'll let Michael do this reading. Okay. Um, Obviously, this is just an amendment, so um, I'm going to be reading the, the perspective changes here. Um, so, be it ordained by the Council of the Town of Tazewell, Virginia, that it hereby adopts the following amendments to Division 11, Article 2 of Chapter 23 of the Code of the Town of Tazewell, specifically amending Section 23 through 64, Historic Districts Created Boundaries of District, and Section 23 through 66, Demolition and Moving. Um, for Sections 23 through 64, it's Historic Districts Created Boundaries of District. A, B, and C are gonna remain unchanged. Uh, the change is gonna be adding D. Um, that's gonna read to maintain consistent preservation standards within historic districts. All contributing properties shall be included in the historic district. And then on section 23 through 66, demolition and moving. Um, no structure or any appurtenances there to that is in a designated historic district on the historic buildings map of the town of Tazewell shall be demolished except as follows. Uh, the change was there that it used to read that has been designated as exceptional or notable. Uh, that will be taken out and will now read, is in a designated historic district. Um, number one will remain unchanged. For number two, um, if a showing is made by a property owner that a building in the historic district, uh, that's how it will read now, it used to read as designated as exceptional or notable, but now it will say in the historic district is incapable of earning an economic return upon its value as appraised by two or three members of the appraisal committee the board shall be given a specific length of time not to exceed six months uh, that's a that'll be taken away the eight months for building rated exceptional uh, within which to devise a course of action satisfactory to the owner Failure to arrive at a satisfactory course of action within the time specified shall release the owner and or the building inspector from further restraints. Number three, the moving of a building classified as takeout exceptional or notable and include in, in the historic district and its appurtenances to a satisfactory site within a historic district or historic place may be recommended by the board but only if no solution for its preservation or in its present site can be found. So it's. Exceptional and notable are hard to define. Yeah. There's things in the historic district you can 
I was just curious how this came up, why we decided to look back at this. Yeah. Basically, it's a way to get free money. Yeah. The Historic Review Board's trying to get certification and certified local government. Certified local government. Which would open us up to grant funding. Mm -hmm. Grant funding and so forth for the historic component. <coughs> We're trying to get the wording set up to Maybe agree with the people who are going to make this call. Exactly. <laughs> Any additional questions? So do we need to schedule a second reading or will that just be at the next council meeting? Yeah, next council meeting. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Uh, special exception permit for 2791 Fincastle Turnpike. Mr. Hurley. Um, Adam Lackens, he owns the one on Baldwin Road and he's trying to buy uh, a house that Mike Payne has and on uh, Fincastle, it's on the left. Across from uh, Try Gary. Gary. Yeah, it's by Gary Gary McCann. Is yeah. it Gary's? I sent out five joint landowner certified mails, and two people called back: Rhonda uh, Rhonda Gibson and uh, Mary Lowe. Uh, of course, the other two was Harry's and Harry's Reynolds and PH Real Estate, and then the Wolfers. Then having calls from them, but the two that did call didn't have any problems. Just wondering what it was, okay. which I since have changed the letters to include what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they all both didn't seem to have any problems. Mm -hmm. They they said it was used for that anyway. Yeah. Short time. That's kind of short. But just leave it. Uh, both. Okay. Motion to approve. <clears throat> okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the special exception, exception permit for 2791 Big Castle Turnpike, say so by saying aye. Uh, all opposed, say so by saying nay. All right, Adam will be happy about that. I so, think you got the sign up already. Yeah, it, so he, he sent me a text and he goes, I think I jumped the gun. He's like, I hope this don't hurt. And I was like, I hope not the gas Yeah, I was like, you should be all right. So, all right, thanks everyone. So, item C, we're going to skip this. And yeah, you could, I'll just remove it completely. It doesn't require a vote. The property belongs to the IEA. <coughs> okay. Again, if you've got any questions about that, look at it. Okay. So, uh, nothing, no miscellaneous unfinished business that I've seen. So, next we'll go into the new business section. Planning Commission recommendation for Tazewell Self Storage Building Permit request. Mr. Hurley. Okay, Barge, a builder permit on uh, a couple of weeks ago, back on 11 29, actually. And I didn't think at the time that the overlay requires anything in the overlay district to come from the planning commission. So that's why we had a special comment last time. And uh, on page 103 in your agenda is the letter published in 104 is the map where he's adding on and if you want to see the large map i got one of those here and you can see it he's just adding one he's added one building so it's been approved by zone and it's been approved by planning commission he just needs to offer it same building, just one more building. It's out of the floodplain, and it's the setback's only 10 and exactly 45 feet from the runway. So. Make a motion to approve, Mayor. I get a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the building permit, stay so by saying aye. Aye, sir. Aye. All opposed, stay so by saying nay. Please. All right. Motion carries. Yeah. 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 All right. So I don't believe there's any miscellaneous under new business. The chief, anybody sign in? No. no? So uh, next is our council comments. The council. I'm very disappointed that we're not going to hear anything about. No groundhog talk. Don't no miss a groundhog. Executive <laughs> session. Oh, the, they're going to be in the executive session. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so. Uh, I would like to say I was very pleased with the activities on December 4th, whoever is responsible 
Thank you. It was a great event. That was a great event. Yeah, yeah. Well, today, train station for you. Yeah, it was pretty much great. So, uh, Chris, because we like you so much, we're actually having an executive session after this, but we're going to join the uh, yeah. adjourn the public meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Do we adjourn? Or do we? Yeah. We've got to go into executive okay. and then go so can I get a motion to catch and I'll call you back to go okay. into I'll make sure to go into executive session. If you want me. Got a second? Any discussion? Yes, I've done my part of it. Okay. All in favor, say somebody say nay. I'll call you back. Right. Right. All opposed, say somebody say nay. All right. I mean, because I was just going to withdraw myself from that anyhow. Okay, I won't call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a call later and let me know how it went. Okay, see you. Okay, so we're going to go to the executive session.